Hello fellow data friends, welcome back to our not yet lost campaign on Iron Man. We are going to transform this Krakow into this Poland. A small recap. We are a Russian Dominion and Russia just granted us the state of Warsaw because we are a Dominion. Russia is protective, Warsaw is unincorporated in Russia and Warsaw was not adjacent to any Russian incorporated state. I just loaded the game, so migration was not calculated yet, but Vasava has a lot of unemployed people who might leave, so we will provide them with some work soon. I want to incorporate Vasava, so I need more bureaucracy, which we will build in Silesia for two reasons. Firstly, Silesia has sulfur, which means cheap paper. And we are currently building some paper factories. Cheap paper means cheap input for government administration. Secondly, Silesia needs more tax capacity. Warsaw also has too little tax capacity, but also lower GDP and we have proportional taxes, so it is likely that we can get more taxes from Silesia. Two more government administrations are already queued. One gives about 65 bureaucracy and we need about 230, so we need two more. We are still building in Silesia, so I will add a road maintenance degree here for the 10% construction bonus. That only costs 75 authority, since we inherited a power block statue from Prussia. Another road maintenance degree is still active in West Galicia. I don't want to build there in the near future, but what about infrastructure? West Galicia gets about 100 infrastructure from the state, which are mostly railways in the urban center. And we get 100 infrastructure from population, where 37 comes from the degree. But even without the degree, we get 149 points from population, which is capped at 100. That cap is increased by 20 by the road maintenance degree. So we get 20 infrastructure from the degree currently. Which means we will be slightly over the infrastructure cap in West Galicia without the degree, which I want to move to Warsaw. So I queue a railway in West Galicia at the front of the queue. Once it's done, we can move the degree to Warsaw, because we are going to build a lot on Warsaw. We don't want unemployed people, because they might want to move away. Now, what are we going to build in Warsaw? If we take a look at our economic dependence with Russia, then we get plus 0.9 dependence from unfulfilled buy orders. We are mostly buying grain, fabric and wood. So that's what we are going to build in Warsaw. We need about 1000 wood, so we are going to build all 9 logging camps. But logging camps need tools, so we built a tool workshop. Oh, and we upgrade the production method of the textile mill in Warsaw. But tools need steel. And steel needs iron and coal. We also need about 800 grain and fabric. So we need more rye farms. The rye farms in Warsaw need a better production method. And I want apple orchards for several reasons. We are going to build grocery factories soon, which will provide liquor anyway. And it will provide a local source of sugar. And we are currently using 109 fruit from Russia, so this will make us less dependent on Russia as well. With fruit orchards, one level of rye farm produces 20 grain. We are currently researching fertilizers, which will raise that to 35. So to gain about 800 grain, we need roughly 23 farms, which need 115 fertilizers before upgrading the production method. Hence, we need another fertilizer plant in Silesia. Sulfur is still very cheap, so we won't upgrade the sulfur mine. But we also need more fabric and all we can do about this is building some ranches. One ranch is only producing 15 fabric, so we would need about 60 ranches to meet our goals, which is a bit much. And they eat grain as well. So we start with just 10 ranches. That is going to produce a lot meat. So we build some food factories. Let's say 5. But then we need some glass for the liquor production. Let's say two. By the way, we will upgrade our glass works in West Galicia. But glass needs lead, so we will build a lead mine. And groceries also need some iron, so we add another iron mine. I feel like we can stop here, since we queued four years of construction and wait for the results. And all this just to reduce our dependence on Russia and we will very likely need even more grain and fabric. But we are paying 17,000 per week to Russia which we won't need as a protectorate. I want that. Now about diplomacy. The state of Kaunas is not incorporated by Russia. And the only Russian adjacent state is Vilnius, 
which is also not incorporated. So Russia should grant us counters to reduce our liberty desire once we got a land connection. We are going to attack Prussia to conquer West and East Prussia to establish such a connection. And when we look at our pre-war screen, we see that Russia has plus 77 preference for us and no other great power wants to support Prussia. So we declare war on Prussia. Worst case scenario, we use Russian military goods to build a massive conscript army. We will prepare a smaller force right now. We will use line infantry since we don't have much ammunition in the Russian market. Let's conscript everyone without a degree. We will raise them once the diplope starts. But once we conquered East and West Prussia, then we have ports and access to the sea. So in preparation to get some ports, we change our research a bit. We want Queenine first and continue on fertilizer afterwards. Before we let time pass, let's check if we need to update more production methods, especially in the newly conquered territories. Yes, baking powder, more canned meat and more patent stills. Sewing machines would reduce productivity. The close industry in Silesia can afford it. That will improve the demand in our own market. Mechanized workshops, very nice. Crystal glass everywhere, we will build lead mines soon. We own a firearms industry, let's upgrade them. And we upgrade all the mines. And we change the urban centers. While public trams would be fine in some states, they lower the income of the railways and lower the workforce in open centers. No thank you. By the way, Posen in Silesia got this newly conquered debuff. Without laissez-faire, we could nationalize buildings cheaply. But we have laissez-faire, so we only get less taxes and less conscripts. But Rosava was a gift, so it has no tax debuff and no radicals from conquering. We let some time pass and there is the Diplo play. We can sway two nations, Russia and Austria. Russia will take a war goal, humiliation against Prussia, totally fine for me. But we will not sway Russia right now, because Russia is our overlord. They will take over the Diplo play and we want more war goals first. But we mobilize and raise our conscripts. We will probably go to war more often in the future and will attempt to fight Russia for independence at some point. That is why I want some more generals. I found a hidden experience system for generals in the game files. I still need to analyze it, but in short, generals at the front line get more experience. So I want young generals. Julius is 35 and he got good traits, so I will take him. Let's fill up until 4 generals. Hendrik is a nice defender, okay who next? Wilhelm is 38 and again a good defender, nice. Let's see if it works out. And everyone on defend for now and move to the front. We can sway some nations and Prussia added war goals against us. We can sway Russia and even Bavaria, but first we need more war goals. We need to save 20 maneuvers for Russia. I want East Prussia. We could ask for Pomerania, but we are already at 60 infamy and that would be another 30. That seems a bit much. But I want war reparations. Money is power. Okay, we can still use 21 maneuvers before swaying Russia. Liberate and revoking claims is too expensive. By the way, even without conquering East and West Prussia, we could not force Prussia to release Poland. They don't own Warsaw and three Polish provinces. What about nationalization? 20 infamy for 8 buildings? That is only 8 less than Pomerania. We could transfer subjects though. Bremen and Hamburg are tiny and a mess. Mecklenburg seems fine. They may be able to pay some money to us. So we take Mecklenburg and sway Russia. Russia joined the Diplo play as leader and we will get some nice payoffs. This makes Prussia worried, but they should not be worried enough to back down. Also we don't need more soldiers ourselves. Russia can handle this. And no one of importance will help Prussia. By the way, since we are getting access to the sea soon and can get some colonies for our own, let's enact colonial exploitation. Prussia swayed Saxony. That does not change much but they want war reparations. Chemical bleaching unlocked through tax spread. That means more paper for our paper mills. And bone china for our glass factories. Our own dye works would be really nice. We are currently importing some from China and the trade route can't grow anymore without a harbor. Since we got more paper, let's lower the priority for our second paper factory. An event. Do we need more prestige? We can't be better than a minor power as a subject. 20 success chance, it is. The war is about to start, so we set one general to pillage, so our troops will help to push against the Prussians. This will increase the numerical advantage as an attacker at the very least. 
the war has broken out. And we have the first battle. It is manpower against quality. While Prussia is winning the equal setups, there are also some battles where we overrun the Germans. Discord within the Intelligentsia. Hmm, just give me better success chance. Oh, we get a Welsh mass migration. I guess we get about 1000 Welsh per week. Not the biggest mass migration, but it's fine. As you can see, our front advantage is rising. Prussia's 155 units only have 37,000 men left. Our 321 units are down to 123,000 men. While these are big losses, we can just replenish our forces faster. Colonial exploitation progress to study. Well, we have 97% success chance. Yeah, now we are overrunning the Germans with our superior manpower. They are down to 10,000 men. Oh, front split. We are still at the front. Colonial exploitation progress to voting. Saxony is beaten. Oh, a lot of Russians are back at St. Petersburg. Come back. Russia is fighting the Ottomans and Great Britain while they are fighting Prussia. Cocky. And that interferes with my war. We need to conquer Mecklenburg because that is part of our war goals. Which means we need more men of our own at the front lines. How is the market situation? We can use some artillery and small arms. And we need some authority. This means we cancel the degrees in West Galicia. Or Sava has unemployed people. East Galicia and Posen have a lot of peasants. They get enlistment efforts. One mobile artillery needs two artillery inputs. We have 20 more cell orders, so we build, say, 25 units artillery. And a lot of line infantry. We still have an advantage at the front. Let's try to press our advantage. Oh, a Finnish revolt is brewing. Russia has its hands full, it seems. We got colonial exploitation, nice. Now we just need to win the war. More Russians are arriving again. Seems like the Finnish revolt is already over. Good for us. Greece left the Russian power block. Greece is a British subject now. Russia has no own war goals in the war against the Ottomans anymore. Ah, another front split. We can use our army to attack Pomerania. We are still close. Ah, they are moving there on their own. Russia is going below the war support. And we got Mecklenburg. Russia upgraded the power block to Vassalization 3. It is just that they can enact degrees in subjects, right? I don't mind that. And we won. Very nice. We got a subject access to the sea, and 8,000 weekly payments from Prussia. Ok, time to take stock and plan the next steps. At first, I want to incorporate all new provinces. We need a little under 600 bureaucracy for that, and we got 130. One government administration gives 65, so we need about 8 buildings. Silesia has cheap paper and is missing 60 tax capacity, so we build 5 in Silesia and 3 in Vasava to increase employment and tax capacity there. We conquer two new construction centers from Prussia, but I think I want one more. Which we will also build in Vasava, because we will build a lot of construction materials there and we get a tiny boost to state efficiency. I would like more construction, but our interest rate is 10%. Not bad, not great either. So I will pay attention to our budget to see if we can afford more. Secondly, politics. I still want counters from Russia and they are still protective, so they should grant us the state soon. But our liberty desire is not looking so great. Russia is protective, so they will only lower our autonomy if we hit 10 liberty desire. I would like to become a protectorate the peaceful way, so we can stop paying Russia before we are ready to fight for independence. But I am not sure we will be able to. We need to get rid of the support regime. The buff to legitimacy is great, but I want more liberty desire. As far as I can tell, there is no request stop support button. But according to the game files, we need to have minus 25 ideological opinion between our governments. You can check that value in the pre-war screen for any war. According to this, our governments are somewhat happy with each other. So we are going to change that. The landowners are in charge in Russia, so what happens when we go full industrialists? Ok, we need something else. Let's try the petit bourgeoisie. Just slightly negative. Let's do the intelligentsia. Really, they still like it? What's going on with Russia? They have a market liberal in charge of the landowners. Let's try the rural folk. That is minus 23. Not enough. I need minus 25. The armed forces did the trick. Ok, now they should break the support once time goes by. But before we do that, let's do some diplomacy first. Who hates Russia? Basically almost everyone. So let's raise relations with Great Britain. And we declare some rivalries against some minor German nations to get more influence. 
Now we improve relations with France and the Ottomans. We need more rivals. I will also raise relations with Prussia. You never know when you might need it. Ok, we get 10% faster infamy decay. Is there another German miner we can rival? Yes, several. Nice. 18% faster infamy decay. Oh right, we got our own subject now. Plus 0 0.66 liberty desire per week because they are isolated. Ah, due to the war and raiding ship lanes. So we grant them their own market for now. That is better. Entry improve relations. And we have some more German miners. We can rival for more infamy decay. Ok, 20% faster decay is good enough. So we can start the clock again. Mecklenburg is damaging relations. Bad subject. A revolution to enact interventionism. I will need to think about that. While I was thinking, patch 1.7.6 dropped. Since it's just a hotfix, it should not break anything. So I updated. Enacting interventionism would give me a lot of loyalists. And with interventionalism, I'm not forced to sell buildings. Then Russia cannot buy my buildings anymore and the percentage of Russian ownership would go down as my economy grows. That sounds like a good idea. Oh, and we have no more Russian government support. I didn't notice any information when they stopped. Ok, I want interventionism and who do we need in government? Oh look, almost everybody wants it. That is easy. So we take the industrialists and enact interventionism with 95% success chance. Nice. I still have the enlistment efforts degrees active. Let's remove those. For now, road maintenance in Vasava for more construction. Greener grass in West Galicia for more mass migrations. Posen is also integrated, so we add a greener grass edict in Posen as well. And we can add another degree in Silesia or Posen due to the power block statues there. Silesia has more GDP, so throughput would be more impactful. There are a lot of clothes and weapons factories, so we encourage manufacturing. Looks like Russia is losing that war. The Great Molasses Flood. Minus 50% throughput for 5 years sounds too much. I take the radicals. The Foral Manifesto. We are using a movement to get interventionalism, so more support please. Lobbyists lectures in Krakow. The industrialists are in government, so stronger industrialists also means more legitimacy. And Russia lost the war. What a weak overlord. Interventionism progress to study. And we got Queenine. Since we prepared colonial exploitation, where do we want a colony? Most of Central Africa has severe malaria. We can colonize there, but it will take forever. We could take West Sahara, but we don't need sulfur right now. And South America would also not help. We need our own dye source. We could colonize Central Africa and conquer Congo. We inherited a small standing army from conquering Prussian states. And a tiny navy. But using 5 ships to land 8 units would mean a big penalty. But it might work. I want to subjugate Congo anyway, which will likely work, but I don't want to risk paying war reparations to Congo. So I declare interest in Congo and South Africa and will try to get some subjects there. Congo got at least a tiny amount of dice. Gaza as well. And we got enough bureaucracy to incorporate Vasava. Time for them to pay some taxes. Hamburg rivals us and we got shell guns. Upgrading our artillery factory would not help. Interventionism progress to voting. And we can establish a colony. Can we get a colony neighboring Congo? Yes, that is a land border just in case. Let's build a harbor here and move our tiny army. And let's increase our line infantry to skirmish. Such small units can live from the Russian supply. Oh, the conscripts upgraded as well. No. And we can incorporate West Prussia. Man over machine. Another election? I don't care about the People's Party. Production and agitation. More momentum for the Liberal Party is fine. But the church joined them? Ah, they have a reformer. Our units arrived and now we wait for some more organization. And we have interventionism. This should make us more resistant to Russian economic influence. Time to incorporate East Prussia. And start a diplo play against Congo. We can make them a protectorate. This way, they can build stuff themselves and the population is not discriminated against. Portugal and Benin want to help Congo? Portugal has two units, I don't care. Benin is looking like the dangerous foe. Wait, Portugal has no chips and Congo and Benin have two each? Funny. Let's threaten war. Congo is fearful, but not to the limit of 75. Let's add some conscripts to scare them, but only line infantry, for now at least. The election is over and the rich won. What a surprise. Ok, we got the escalation phase, 
the Congo can back down now. Let's pile on some secondary war goals to scare them and mobilize our glorious army and move to the front before I forget about that. And I move my tiny navy to Congo, just in case. Nah, I need more convoys. Raising concerns. Do I care about the armed forces? Plus 19 and plus 20? Well, who cares then? And Congo backs down, becoming my subject. Hmm, Mecklenburg really doesn't like us as overlord, because we don't have enough prestige mostly, so we need a bigger army, I guess. Our artillery factories need some customers. So we create a second army and take this young officer here. Then we build five artilleries and five skirmish infanteries in Silesia and a munition plant. And we improve relations with Congo, so to the next protectorate. Gaza is a British subject, not good. What about Zulu? Looks like fair game. They are fearful, rightfully so. Time to mobilize our freedom fighters. And add some war goals. Gaza sides with Zulu. They are still fearful. City of Plenty, that is a good one. I don't want to raise the minimum expectation for 3 years, but I take the free loyalists. And Zulu backs down, nice. Let's improve relations. My infamy is back at 60. I should not be aggressive anymore. I need to wait. My infamy is also hurting the liberty desire. My barracks are at the end of the queue. Time to alt click a bit. By the way, we can form Poland. But Russia still has 3 Polish homelands. That might be enough to release Poland from Russia. Would that work if I am Poland? I will be patient about this one. We get some improvements with Mecklenburg and paying normal government wages might help. But that would cost 9000. No thank you. Look at the great improvement I brought to Congo. Their GDP jumped. The same for Zulu. We are such a nice overlord. Scottish mass migration, very nice. A mining accident. The upper strata should be quite happy for now. They can take the hit. Okay, we are paying 7000 in interest. I guess I need to be more careful. Inefficient agriculture. The industrialists have plus 18 approval. We got the rubber technology from tax spread, always nice to have. Oh, Great Britain expelled our diplomats. I guess they don't like my colonization. Several great powers don't like us. We need to stay nice to Russia. Austria is also damaging relations. Baden sides with Austria? Ah, we got a German leadership conflict. That should be fun. But no one would accept any help. I don't want infamy, but some war reparations would have been nice. We got improved fertilizer, very useful. Okay, that reduces incomes on rye farms by 400. They should be able to not go bankrupt because of this. Yes, all farms. Osawa will be fine once we build some ranches. And we can improve the production method for fertilizers. We got some art academies, upgrade. What do we want to take next? Synthetic plants would make us independent in terms of dice. I want that. We achieved the realist movement due to the art upgrade. I want the tech boost. A government petition. The industrialists want poor laws? The industrialists? Ah, uh, no migration controls is fine though. Let's enact that. Can do attitude. The famous can opener event. I don't want to pay almost 3000 pounds weekly for 5 years. Our infamy dropped finally below 50. And I'm missing bureaucracy. Let's build 3 government buildings in Vasava. They can use more tax capacity as well. Mm, the investment pool is accumulating some money, but they don't spend fast enough. Can I sell them some of my buildings? Or that all reserve for already queued buildings. Citizens of the world. The armed forces are at plus 11, so only 10% more success. Belgium sides with Prussia against the Confederate States. The Confederate States want Bremen as a subject, while Prussia is fighting Austria. Anhalt is the only border between Austria and Prussia. No wonder Prussia is not overrun, because Saxony is neutral. Labor movement unlocked through tax spread. The anti-Austria lobby offers us an investment agreement with France. No, I don't want to invest in France or get any foreign investment. Movement to enact universal suffrage. I don't want that. As little support as possible. Rousing speech. The president is already 68, but everybody loves him, right? More popularity should help in the votes. More power to the industrialists. Sweden supports the Confederate States of America. Let's see if they can get Bremen. Foreign competition. That is an easy choice. Less debuffs. Logistics unlocked through tax spread. Franco-Canadian mass migration, very nice. And look at the colors of Prussia. The Confederate States of America landed successfully. No migration controls, progress to study. Popular playwright, more prestige might help us with the liberty desire against Russia and our subjects. 
I take the prestige. Public address goes awry. That event again. I take the setback to get more success chance. We are at war? Oh, Russia is attacking China. Well, have fun, my overlord. And they only got 12 infamy. I hope for more, so we get more liberty desire. Again an election? Four years sure pass fast. I take less damage to the Liberal Party. We allow progress to voting. And we need more government administration. Our population is growing too fast. Russia and China are preparing for war. Well, I guess Russia will win this one. Partisan paper. Well, I don't like the Conservative Party and more throughput is nice. The war with China ended our dye trade route. Why Russia? Stupid overlord. Let's import some. We can import from Portugal over land due to our colonies. From Britain as well. And Persia. Brazil needs ships, but we should be fine again. Oh, and silk. Okay, that helped. And we got no migration controls and fulfilled the government petition. My interest payments are rising similar to my increased income. Not good enough. Let's queue Moodle funds for less interest rates and more minting. And the industrialists won the election yet again. And Russia is making progress in China. Time to fix our finances. We still got almost 2.5 million peasants. So I removed the greener grass edicts to add some consumption taxes. Services will bring good money. And tea. And nice clothes. That should help to keep our debt in check. Okay, our liberty desire did not really improve. We are buying less from Russia, but we are also selling less. And they still own 50% of our GDP? Did that not even change a little? Cross-border investments. We either raise relations with Russia or we get more taxes? I want the taxes. A famous cafe. We can invite an agitator for appointed bureaucrats. No need for that. Accidental good press for Prussia. I don't care about 10 relations, but for some loyalists. And I got some free influence. Let's improve relations with Spain. And maybe some American? North America is such a mess. Let's improve relations with Mexico. And we need even more bureaucracy. East Galicia needs some tax capacity. Russia can decrease our autonomy, they won't, since they are protective. And so long, we can enjoy some nice modifiers. But we need more liberty desire without angering Russia too much. Mm, the Russian ownership in our buildings increased by 0.2%, didn't it? Are Russians just building more new buildings in Poland and enough to even expand their influence? Not good. Yeah, Russia is winning the war against China. Easily, it seems. Police coordination was added to the Russian power block. Ah, less bureaucracy cost. Very nice. Well done, my overlord. Do you remember when I queued about 4 years of construction? This is done now. Our economic dependence decreased, but we still need a lot of stuff. Or would it be easier to sell more stuff to Russia? I mean, produced goods are worth more, but Russia's GDP is also bigger. Let's see what we can sell to Russia. The market needs 500 shares and 400 groceries and 300 tools. That are 4 food factories, 3 tools factories and 5 furniture factories. And we probably need a railway and I don't want an expensive power block statue. And we are also down to 32 infamy, but we have nowhere near enough liberty desire. We are paying so much to Russia. 40,000 pounds per week. But we are also feeding on the market. But that is so much money. Mm, Britain is close to supporting us. So is France. So is Austria. The Ottomans would support us. Okay, we get minus 10 because our infamy is too high. So we wait a bit longer. Once our infamy goes below 25, it is time to prepare for independence. But this also means I don't want to sell more to Russia. I want to become as economic independent as possible. So we need more wood. Time for some logging camps in Western East Prussia. Inactive trade routes? Oh, the great powers are fighting over Greece. Russia versus Austria and the Ottomans. The war has already started. A big war over tiny war goals. Well, have fun, I guess. Credit where credit is due. Well, the industrialists are the best, aren't they? A foreign manifesto. No support for universal suffrage. Russia is still fighting China, by the way. I guess the treaty port in Shandong is the reason. Raising concerns. The industrialists can take another hit. They are at plus 16. I miss the end of the war about Greece. It doesn't look different to me. But Russia is winning against China now. Congo is colonizing. They got frontier colonization. Very nice. Okay, we can produce our own dice now. Let's do that. And Russia won against China. And Finland wants to grant us investment rights. But I don't want those. By the way, Russia never granted us counters. But why? Kaunas is not incorporated, 
and its only neighboring Russian state is also not incorporated. We are a dominion, and Russia is still protective, and sometimes at peace. It is not a Russian homeland. Maybe because my liberty desire isn't high enough, so they don't want to reduce it? Time to gather some support for independence. If Russia is not gifting us states, what's the point? The Ottomans are on board, and so is France. That is enough to beat Russia. Time to anger our overlord. They would likely support our government. Hmm. By the way, we might also be able to go the other way round. Get reduced to a puppet, but then we have high liberty desire. But being a puppet is annoying. So, let's change the government so Russia won't accept. Rural folk and trade unions is bad enough. Now we can ask for our own market. Denied as well. And we got Steam Donkey through tech thread. They are still protective. Let's damage relations. And get the good government back. We unlocked organized sports. A donation of knowledge. A free university? Yes, please. And we got triage from tech spread. How come we are still using 900 Russian wood after building a lot of logging camps? Okay, what does the market need in general? Some iron and some cloth. And some furnitures. Inefficient agriculture. I don't want more radicals. Interest payments are costing me dearly. Not sure it was a good idea to go into debt so soon. Cross-border investments with Congo. More taxes would be nice, but our capitalists are at plus 11. But we still get the bonus with plus 8. Let's take the taxes. We are breaking even for liberty desire now, because our relations are normal. For whom the bell tolls. Oh, our glorious industrialist leader died. Let's use that for more momentum. What? Russia enforced military access? They forced us into a war with Britain, as if I would send some units. But did that increase our liberty desire? I think so. Greece wants independence, and I guess Russia guaranteed their independence. Since they have no other war goals, that might even work. Russia is a good guy here. Time to really save my finances. My debt is growing, and I don't like that huge interest cost. We would be totally fine without that huge payment to Russia, and we are working to get rid of that. But still, I don't like paying that much interest. While I was thinking if my radical loyalist situation would allow for higher taxes, I remembered an old trick. We can increase our tax revenue without actually getting more radicals. Let me raise taxes to very high. And we will use this peasant pop as an example. Wait until the end of the week. Okay, they have too much income to demote. Peasants were probably a bad choice anyway due to subsistence stuff. Take these shopkeepers. They started to demote because we increased the taxes. They have minus 17% now. Wait another week. Minus 35%. As you see, pops don't instantly demote. The progress here is kept. One week cannot change more than 25%. Wait another week. Minus 52%. Every pop will have different speeds, because some might have been near demotion anyway. Now we have 3 weeks of very high taxes. So any pop demoting due to higher taxes is at minus 75% at most. Now I wait 5 weeks with normal taxes, so all progress resets to the former level. Now a full 3 week, 5 week cycle passed. We got 3 weeks of very high taxes, and the radicals did not change in a noticeable way. If they used that the way sooner, my financial situation and probably my construction would be way better. But I just forgot about it. And it gets annoying after a while. Aggressive campaigning. I want less damage to the free trade party. Look at the loyalists for poor laws. And we have barely any unemployed anyway. The poor just become peasants. And the industrialists still want it as well. Let's do it. Oh, the British want to naval invade St. Petersburg against 200 Russian units. That might not work. Partisan papers. More paper throughput. Britain raids our convoys. Not good. Congo and Zulu lose their market access. I could grant them their own market, but they only have one state anyway. That would change nothing, so I won't do it. Britain got a successful naval landing. Not in St. Petersburg, but they made it. Impressive. Discord within the armed forces. More success chance is just fine. The Free Trade Party only got 65% votes. Such a bad election for us. Let's add the Intelligentsia for more government legitimacy. I think I want to try to stay on very high taxes, especially with the loyalists from the poor law movement. To minimize the long term impact, I will first switch to high taxes. If I switch to very high taxes immediately, every pop would demote with this plus 100% radicals modifier. But if I use high taxes for some time first, some pops will already demote and only have this plus 50% modifier. Seems like Greece will stay a British subject, but Russia and Britain keep fighting. A donation of knowledge, another free university, very nice. 
political migration. That is a tough choice. Here we get more prestige, that would help us a bit with liberty desire, but we get even more radicals. The other option is the other way around. We also get an agitator for laissez-faire. I think I want laissez-faire back once we are independent, so hopefully soon. Action and reaction. The trade unions want to join the anti-Austria union. I don't mind Austria anymore. I only want to fight Russia at some point, but Austria is lowering relations. Let them join, in case Austria will try something. Poor laws progress to study. We can see the first radical hit from higher taxes, but our finances are looking way better. We managed to get an increase in liberty desire from economic independence, probably because we are selling a lot of weapons to Russia during the war. Poor laws progress to voting. There seems to be no other jump or radicals due to taxes, so let's use very high taxes. We will pay back debt for a while and then increase construction at some point. Why are we wasting taxes? My bureaucracy is fine. Our ruler got expensive tastes. My poor money. And we have poor laws. While the very high taxes increased our radicals, our movement improved the situation quite a bit. Poor laws decreased our bureaucracy. We built two government administrations in Vescalicia because they need tax capacity and waste a lot of money. And a railway for infrastructure. What else can we build? We need more iron and groceries according to the market data. Demand and supply are met for tools, but look at that predicted earnings. You always need more tools. What about our subjects? They hate being isolated from the Russian market. So let's grant them their own market for now. We need to make them more dependent on us if we want to lower their autonomy. Or we need to be way more powerful. Mm, well, we could force the issue from a deeper play. And Congo is still loyal, so they would just give in. Interesting. Our infamy is down to 8, and I think we still need some more years until we can go to war with Russia. Let's do it. Dominions need to pay their overlord. Ah, they pay 1,300 pounds per week. Nice. Once the Russian war with Britain is over and the convoy is recovered, I will return them into my market and try to increase their dependency. While I also could increase my construction right now, I don't want to. I'm still paying a lot of interest and I want to go to war with Russia in about 2-3 to three years. I want to use enlistment efforts to get some conscripts, which means I will very likely have to remove some taxes and pay a big army. I want some debt reserved for that. Cross-borders investment. My industrialists are plus 9, so I would lose my investment pool bonus. I don't want that, so Congo gets more taxes. New tech unlocked due to tax spread. Nice bonuses. Mm, my investment pool is also looking kind of big. Oh, some private buildings are waiting in the queue. I definitely need more construction. Let's build 3 more construction centers. Then I can still reduce my debt for the coming war. I had some time to think about this and I had a great idea. We are going to solve our debt crisis by building a giant army. A big army will be handy when we are fighting Russia and we can defend ourselves once we are independent. Building a bigger army will increase our prestige substantially and thus our rank. We will become a major power, which will decrease our interest payments by 25%. Spain has 424 prestige and is a great power. It will demote to a major power by 328 prestige. So we also have a really good shot at becoming a great power. This will decrease our interest payments by 50%. And once we are independent, the Russians don't have investment rights anymore. So I can switch back to laissez-faire to sell all my buildings and get another 25% interest rate reduction. This will reduce our interest payments a lot. And more prestige will reduce the liberty desire for our subjects. So I will keep the three construction centers and use the rest of our income for an army. Okay, we have 11 small arms factories and three more are being built. This means we are producing 1000 small arms soon. That will not be a limiting factor. What about ammunition? We are producing 120 ammunition. Let's fuse our army to get a better overview for our current situation. Let's remove the conscripts for now. Mobile artillery does not need ammunition, so we can supply 120 units of skirmish infantry with our production. Once the war starts, the use of weapons will increase by 60%. That will be expensive, but no shortage. Silesia has ammunition and small arms, so we build there. Ok, 100 units in Silesia and then we see. The partially built railway and iron mine can stay atop, the rest will be behind the barracks. Alt clicking is really useful here. The empire of Japan is building in our country? What? How? They are not in the Russian power block, they have their own market. I have no idea why they are even allowed to do that. Oh, they have an investment agreement with Russia. That agreement extends to subject it seems. Interesting. Mutual funds unlocked. That will be very helpful to increase our income. Now we are heading to war with Russia, so we are getting close to form the Commonwealth. 
For the achievement, we also need to fulfill this journal entry. So I will research pan-nationalism. Let's talk about our war goals against Russia a bit. As main war goal, we could go for independence or for more autonomy. If we go for more autonomy, we stay in the Russian market and can use the support independence mechanic in the future. This might make future wars against Russia easier. But if we go for independence, we can increase our country rank and potentially form our own power block. I think the last option is cooler. Also, we want these states. Three of those are Polish homelands. That should be enough to be able to release Poland from Russia. Then we can wait for the Polish unification event to merge with these states for free. But it might take a while and I don't know how long. And I don't know if I can release Poland from Russia if I myself already am Poland. That is why I stayed Krakow for now. But if I form Poland, I get claims on these regions. This allows us to use the return state war goal for reduced infamy and we get these states immediately. This makes it more likely that I can form Poland-Lithuania in this video, which I like very much. So I will go down this route and form Poland now. Poland has emerged as the rising power in Poland. We get claims and some prestige for 19 years. And I like the new flag. The Russian-British war ended. But what are the results? Greece got independence and reduced autonomy? Greece is still a dominion. Oh, Britain is naval invading Austria. They are fighting about a revolt in the Ionian Islands. A lot of trouble for Britain because of the Greek holdings. Ok, we get roughly 60 construction a week for the government queue. One barrack needs 100 construction. Which means we get one barrack about every two weeks. So we need about 200 weeks for 100 barracks, which is about 4 years. The army will be expensive, but we still have a nice surplus, which we can use for now. One construction center costs 100 construction and provides 5 construction per week. Which means, in terms of construction, it pays for itself within 20 weeks. So, if we build more construction centers, use them for longer than about half a year, we will gain more construction than we spend. Which is quite worth it, I think. So, I build more construction centers in Silesia. After accounting for investment pool transfer, we are paying about 37,000 for almost 60 construction on the government queue. And we got about 30,000 extra income. We want some buffer, because we might overload the private construction queue, but that feels like 10 extra construction centers. Let's see how that works out. The construction centers finished and the income looks fine. Raising concerns. The industrialists are at plus 14 and lowering the trade unions mean that we lose their throughput bonus. I want to keep it. Congo is damaging relations. Our subjects are acting up. Getting a bigger army should help a lot. City of Plenty. I love that event. Free loyalists. Attack the free loyalists without strings attached. Ah, some naval tech due to tax spread. Time is up, we can demand stuff from our overlord again. Let's ask for market control, which they will deny. Now, we have 83 liberty desire and we need 90, which we will have once we ask for increased autonomy, which they will deny as well. Now we can ask for independence. We got France on our side. Wait a minute, shouldn't the Ottomans help as well? We don't have a common interest, that is easy to fix. The inter is settled, but the Ottomans don't want to help. Let's wait a week, maybe there will be a recalculation. Ah, they turned cooperative. Minus 35 is definitely possible. They have a landowner government. Ok, I tested several government combinations and likely skyrocketed my radicals, but I can't convince the Ottomans to help me. But Britain will, which is even better. They accept it. Now, let's return to a proper government. We can declare the independence war with Britain and France on our side. Some unimportant nations are willing to help Russia. Spain is also close. Austria is more worrisome. They have minus 60 at the moment. Well, let's declare anyway. Here is the diplo play. We can even sway other countries. And Russia added war goals against Britain and France. Perfect for us. Russia still thinks they are somewhat of a match for us. Would have been fun if we could force a Russian back down. By the way, why can't we add a conquer war goal against Kaunas? And we could sway Prussia and Austria. Anyway, add first aid for our forces, then mobilize. Let's wait for the escalation phase. Russia feels pessimistic. Maybe we can work with that. But the Russian gold reserves are a problem. Austria would help us for East Galicia? No way. And Prussia also want their states back? Nope. Ok, can we force a Russian back down while still getting some nice stuff? Russia has the maintain power balance strategy 
which means they will roll between 0 and 25 boldness. According to the wiki, an independence war goal uses 30 maneuvers, which translates to 30 impact points. Assuming the worst case random roll of 25 boldness, we need the Russian confidence level at minus 55. Then they might back down, but we only get one war goal. But if we roll lucky, it might be different. Hey, this is me during editing. Even if the random roll is a super lucky zero, Russia still needs less than minus 30 confidence. Russia backing down is unlikely. Okay, I will do the following. I will add the return states war goals. They are rather cheap. Oh, it is an interest related issue, right? We don't need an interest in Danubia right now, so we change the interests. Then I make the return war goals primary demands. If Russia backs down, I want my Polish states at least. Secondly, can we scare Russia even more? Let's create a conscript army. Skirmish infantry has the highest sum of attack and defense. Let's add all of them. Ok, still minus 26 confidence, so even adding more conscripts with degrees will likely not change much. Anyway, let's add a commander to our conscript unit. The rule for general has nice defensive traits. Brazil has sided with Russia. For real? Brazil? Our new interests are in place. Yeah, now we can conquer to our heart's content. At first, we asked for our last return state. And make a primary, just in case. We have 50 maneuvers left. We need Kaunas, Volhynia and Grodno as well to form Poland-Lithuania. Oh, we need 63 maneuvers to get all of them. But even without making our demands primary, we only had 22 maneuvers left. So close. I will add the war goal for Grodno now and then we look at the sympathy values. If we got Russia into the back down range, this will improve the odds of them backing down. Now I will wait until we are close to the last phase of the diplo play. Maybe Austria will declare neutrality. I don't want to fight them as well if I don't have to. And our allies are not sending very much forces to our front right now. So let's add another commander to our conscript army. Joseph is young and can pillage. Then we promote our defender. Put everyone on defense for now and raise our conscripts. Spain declared neutrality, but I want Austria gone. Anyway, let's move our units to the front. 24 French units are coming. Ok, 78 escalation. Greece, Moldavia and Finland are also helping Russia. Austria is still not neutral. Volhynia has almost 19 infamy, which should raise our infamy level above 50. That is too dangerous. So I will go for Kaunas. And Russian war reparations. Countdown to war, Austria is out. Students rally to enact universal suffrage. No. Look at that. The great powers prepared about 200 units each to fight over Brazil. And we got minus 42,000 pounds each week. That should change once we are no longer formally a subject. The war started and our market is in chaos. Obviously, we will try to trade. But we only have 150 convoys and even importing fabric from Britain will take 121 convoys. So we will need to rely on overland trade. We can trade overland with Prussia, Austria and Saxony. But we also have some subjects which we can exploit. Right now, the trade with the Danish market would use 41 convoys. The Mecklenburg market is adjacent to the Danish market. Our subjects hate us anyway, so I will revoke the market control for Mecklenburg. This alone used all our convoys, but now we are adjacent to the Danish market. And our puppet Zulu is adjacent to the British market. And Congo is adjacent to the market of Portugal. This gives us a lot of overland trade. Ok, our convoys are negative right now, but we can import a lot of resources without convoys. So to fix our market access problem, I will build two ports. And I will add a lot of trade routes. Unless we get trade agreements, I need more bureaucracy, which I will build next. I will need some anyway, once we conquer new land. So I will add some across our states. But the ports first. Now I will trade everything with everyone. I have 71 trade routes, often multiple for the same resource. That should lessen the impact of the market disruption. Ok, what about the front? The British and French want to attack, so let's help them. Yes, we only have infantry, but numbers help, oh I misclicked. First attack went through while we were on defense. Let's change some generals to attack. While our infantry have 31 attack, most Russian units only have 35 defense. So numbers matter a lot here. Looks like battles will be limited a lot by infrastructure. We are still losing a lot of money. Even without paying Russia? Oh, we only have two buildings in the private queue. The reserve and the investment pool is probably empty. And the low bureaucracy is costing us some money. 
I will keep the high construction to fix this faster, but then I will probably remove some construction centers. Even a Polish commander is leading a battle now. Looks promising. The Congo wants higher autonomy. I will grant it. I don't want them to get funny Diplo player ideas, and they don't pay much as a Dominion anyway. Saxony embargoed us. Not very nice. Mm, can we get trade agreements? The British want one. Very nice. Accept it, and we halved our bureaucracy deficit. And I remove the trade routes with Saxony. Saxony hasn't the biggest market, so it will be fine. Look, the Russian forces are down to half the manpower, we have about 75%. So if we push more, we will beat them. Brazil is also driven back, looking good so far. By the way, since we are likely winning the war, no other power will have interest rights in our country. So I can return to laissez-faire to get the sweet interest rate reduction and the investment pool efficiency. It will eradicate the landowners, who are weak, and the rural folk, but that is necessary. We don't have another agitator for laissez-faire. By the way, we can stop damaging relations with Russia. Ah, Greece is forced to surrender, and Benin as well. A lot of people want to keep interventionism. Will the ongoing election change something about this? If anything, it will make it worse. Fighting a revolution with such high support and radicalism is not worth it. Let's stop enacting laissez-faire. We are not improving relations with Britain. Let's do it. And we are pushing Russia back. Some Polish flags are appearing on the map. The election results are in. We can slightly improve our government. And it's free after an election. Why not? Oh, another Diplo play? The Indian colonies of Britain want their independence. But why am I in the Diplo play? Because Britain is supporting me in my independence and some magic? That is the only reason I can think of. But it is bad timing for us. It will distract Britain. And look at Brazil. They still want to fight though. We mostly fixed our convoys and our bureaucracy. So I will reduce construction now to save money. We are still paying a lot. I will reduce construction further. Inefficient agriculture. The capitalists are close to losing their bonus. I don't want that. The Indian independence war started. But I don't care about that. Especially not now. That is Britain's problem. And the borders are quite messy. Brazil left the war. That should free some French units. We only need to control Vilnius and Grodno. We are close. But I set an objective, just in case. Grodno is ours. The Russian units need to relocate. The front is underdefended for now. And we attack with a lot of units. Some Indian nation was beaten. Looks like Britain is doing fine in India. We got all our war goals against Russia. Now we just need to wait a bit. But they are not willing to accept all war goals. Fine for me, let's continue. Britain is totally crushing the Indian uprising. They win even faster than we do. We got an anti-Russia lobby. That is fine, very fitting. A lot of people died or were wounded and a lot of money was spent. But since we are winning, totally worth it. And we won, very nice. And our finances are looking a lot better. Were we secretly still paying our overlord during the war? And we got a nice new color. Sadly, we are still missing one province to form Poland-Lithuania. And we are a major power now. We are still in a war against Moldavia without a land border. White peace is fine. Our units want to join the war in India, which will end shortly anyway, so I will ignore it. But if they go to India, it uses convoys. No thank you, stay here. We need 90 more prestige to become a great power. We have low influence and lose prestige. We need rivals, which are more similar to our rank, like Sweden and Belgium. A second advent, because we finished the Christ of Nations journal entry. Either a lot of Polish people get more loyalists and we get more discrimination in general, or a lot of cultures get some more loyalists. Our population is almost 60% Polish. I need to remove some messages to see the event again. Now we take the PS concept. Totally worth it. The spike in radicals is due to newly conquered regions. We have 319 prestige now. If we change government wages to normal, it would cost a lot, but if we become a great power, and some people will be really happy. We are missing 7 prestige points. We are still building some barracks. We will wait some weeks to see if we upgrade. It would be a nice end to this episode. That was faster than expected. Poland is a great power now. And our interest rate is down to 3.7%. If we could get laissez-faire in the near future, that would be awesome. 
Anyway, that is a goal for the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching, please consider liking and subscribing. I will link the next episode in the end screen once it's done.